Bienvenidos amigos. In this video, we're going to talk about how to define column vectors in MATLAB. Another way to say that is a one-dimensional array. We'll talk about the difference in those two notations in just a bit. Let's get started with a formal definition of a column vector. Here on screen, we have some mathematical terminology that's kind of useful. We're going to let M, as in Monday, M be a natural number. That means M is one, two, three, four, some whole positive number. We say that a column vector X is M by one if it has M real valued entries organized in M rows and one column. This takes the form X equals to X1, X2, all the way down to XM. So the horizontal organization structure are called rows. The vertical organization structure are called columns. In this case, this is a column vector because it has one column and M rows. We say that each entry in this vector, so for each I in one, two, all the way to M, notice there are M separate rows. We label each entry of the vector X, which in this case is in boldface and lowercase. The scalar valued entries are non bold faced and they're labeled X sub I. The first row is X sub one. The second row is X sub two, all the way down to X sub M. These are individual scalar valued entry. This is known as the entry by entry definition of the vector X because we are literally defining that vector entry by entry. We are specifying the coefficients of that vector. That is really a formal mathematical definition. In MATLAB, we can actually store such a vector using special syntax. Here we see the syntax we're gonna use. So we're gonna define the name of a column vector. We're gonna use the assignment operator and then left square bracket, write each individual entry separated by a semicolon. When we're done with the vector, we're going to close that with a right square bracket. Let's use that syntax to define some vectors in R2. We'll find one, we'll call it X, and then I like to open and close my brackets immediately so that I don't forget one of those. We'll start with that first row entry one and the second row entry zero. Go ahead and push enter. So now I have a column vector one zero. We'll try Y equal to zero one. I am separating each row using the semicolon, and then we'll try Z equal to one, one. As we spoke about previously, if I end this assignment with a semicolon, the output of that assignment will be suppressed, even though that variable is stored in my workspace. Notice all three of these vectors are column vectors with sizes two by one, because they have two rows and one column. Let's go ahead and clear our workspace and we'll take a look at a, another example. In this case, let's say that we are given some data having to do with global average temperature deviations over a number of years. This is real data related to the Keeling curve. We'll work on that in one of the labs in this course. Let's go ahead and store the year in a variable called year. And we'll store 1993, 1994, 1995 as a column vector. Looks like it goes all the way to 1997. So in this case, we've got, uh, looks like five. So 1996 and the last one is 1997. Go ahead and enter. Now we'll store the data on the right side of this table in a vector, let's call it G for short. Looks like we've got 0 0.34. Uh, separate that with a semicolon, 0 0.35, 0 0.38, 0. 0.41 and finally we got 0.44 if we enter notice these are both column vectors because I use the classic structure first thing I did is I had the name of the vector on the left hand side assignment operator left square bracket then I type each individual scalar entry separated by semicolons semicolons actually show me where the first row ends and the second begins that's called delimiting each row to delimit to set apart. We also see that the year is structured as a five by one column vector. That's the same information I see here. Year is a five by one column vector. 
G, which is global average temper variations, is a five by one column vector. Something that's kind of fun about MATLAB is now that I have those two vectors together, I can run the plot command. So the first one, I'm gonna compare years to global temperature variations when I put enter. MATLAB will automatically generate a figure, which is what you see here, that tracks the individual entry. So in 1995, it was temperature variations were 0 0.34, 1996, 0 0.35 and then slowly increasing. It looks like it's actually kind of a linear scale. This is done as a scatter plot with individual entries. MATLAB automatically interpolates or connects the dots when you run the plot command. There's some good documentation on the plot command. So if you just typed help plot, you'll get some information about how to use that command to generate plots like the one that you see. For you users uh, who love a challenge at home, see if you can use that documentation to recreate this graph on the left hand side. Regardless, we're learning how to store column vectors as MATLAB variables. Let's move on to yet a third example. Suppose you wanted to take a look at the home prices in Redwood City, California, my hometown. Let's look at year versus medium home price. We'll go ahead and define a variable YR for year. And we'll say that variable becomes 2011, 2012, all the way to 2015, we'll suppress the output by putting a semicolon at the end, push enter, and then we'll call this variable H for home prices. We will suppress the output by putting a semicolon, and then it looks like this is going to be the list of medium home prices on the right-hand side of this table. When I put enter, notice, I immediately have those two variables stored, so I have YR, and I have H, those are both five by one vectors, just like the one before. Once again, we can plot the year versus the home price data. And again, we see this upward trend. One thing that we could do is actually change the color of this trend. So if we did line R and pushed enter, that would turn the default color blue into red. We might also want to use, instead of a line, we could use little circular data points. If we go ahead and enter that command, Notice now MATLAB is putting little circles because what this says is let each individual data point be marked as an O. And then in this case, MATLAB is not using the default line, AKA it's not connecting those. And here we've got that graph of years versus home prices. We'll talk more about how to use the plot command. There's great documentation. I encourage you to read it. The point of this particular video is to highlight the syntax that we use to define column vectors in MATLAB. In all three examples in this video, we saw the syntax in action. On the left-hand side of the assignment operator, we choose a variable name. Those conform to the same rules that we talked about in a previous video. Then we assign the vector that we want to that variable using an equal sign, or in program, we call that the assignment operator. Immediately after that, we open with the left square bracket that indicates to MATLAB that we're gonna store a matrix or a vector in this case. Right after the square bracket, we're gonna go ahead and type the entry, scalar valued entry of our first row. Then we use the semicolon to say that is the end of row one. Then we type the scalar valued entry of row two, semicolon to say that's the end of row two. And we continue on until we get to the last entry in our matrix, which we type out by hand. We then close the matrix or say we are done defining this vector in this case with the right square bracket. If there is no semicolon at the end of this, when we push enter in the command window, the results will be printed out for us or displayed. If I include a semicolon at the end, that will suppress the output. In other words, MATLAB will not show that I'm actually saving that variable. We see a great example of this in play with the last example that we did. In this case, we're defining a five by one vector. Each individual entry is a scalar. In fact, it represents a year. We'll talk more about date time variables in a different video. We did not put a semicolon at the end of our right bracket. And thus, when we entered this command, MATLAB immediately displayed that this YR or year variable was a five by one column vector. In the case of home prices, we use the same syntax, variable name, assignment operator, left bracket, then we entered the individual data, delimited by semicolons. In other words, separated by those semicolons to say the end of row one stops here, row two begins right afterwards, the end of row two stops at the second semicolon, 
all the way to the end. We use the right square bracket to close that. This semicolon after the right square bracket tells MATLAB, when you run this command, please do not display the output in the command window, which is exactly what we've seen MATLAB do. It suppresses that output. Last thing to know is I can use spaces as freely as I would like. If I go back to the last command and I just enter a bunch of spaces, notice after I do that and I run it, MATLAB actually produces the same result out. No problem with that. In other words, the use of semicolons make a difference, but the use of spaces does not make a difference when defining a column vector. That ends this video. In the next video, we'll take a look at how to define row vectors.